your lives became one of the biggest revivalists in that place, building churches in 10 different regions, the, the Bible says. But the master knew that that man was there being tied up, no one taking care of him, no one doing anything for him, and the only way he could fulfill his purpose was to be untied. Be untied. But before he got there, you see the opposition. And watch this. Opposition did not go to the man because the devil already had the man. Opposition went to the one who was going to deliver the man. So those of you who are called to, for delivering ministry, you had to visit people to pray for them. Know that the devil is after you. So don't be on the, don't be on the defense. You need to be on the what? Offense. Is it making any sense? Is it making any sense? So when we are going to deliver people, I am skipping a lot of things for time's sake. Amen? But I thought that was very important to mention. So you need to pray for yourself. And those of you who need deliverance, you need to understand that when a man of God is saying he's coming to you or she's coming to you, sometimes it's not because they don't want to come. Because there's always opposition in the house of the person that God has sent to help you. So instead of calling them their names and putting them bad news on Facebook, pray for them. Amen. Pray for them. Because there's an opposition. So why would the devil fight the people? Because of destiny. Because of destiny. The devil do not want you to fulfill your destiny. But it doesn't matter anyway because when Jesus sends for you, Jesus has sent for you. And you are going to be free anyway. Amen. 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 Listen to this. Finding your true giving God purpose in life is the key to success and fulfillment. Finding your true giving God purpose in life is the key of success and fulfillment. If you don't find your purpose, which is the reason for which you were born, you will never be fulfilled. You will never be happy in this life. You will always be empty and incomplete. No matter how many money you have, how many people you sleep with, where you go to, where you live, what you drink, what you wear, it doesn't make no, no, no difference. And you may say, oh, that cannot be true. If I have me a lot of money, I'm going to relax. Let's take a walk to Hollywood. <laughs> Look at the Hollywood stars. They have everything we can ever dream of. The women, they have the best makeup, best hair, best makeup dresses, and everything. But why do they commit suicide? Why are they on drugs? Why are they on prescription medications? Why are they married in, married out? Why are they jumping out of windows, dying lonely, very sad, out, always alone? When you watch them, they always find them in a hotel somewhere alone. You would think they will have friends. Why? Because the life they are living is a counterfeit life. A life that they and the devil chose for, them, for themselves. It is not from the agenda of God. It is not their purpose for living. It looks good. It looks wonderful. It produces money. But it is not your purpose. Until you find your true purpose in life, you will never be fulfilled. Amen? And I need to, to come here a little bit. As a parent, I am guilty. Most of the time, parents, what they do, because they want to be, to be footballers, and they, they do not become footballers, they start to beat their children, take them to football field. You must become the next Mila Roger or the next Maradona. Is it the will of God? Is it guaranteed for success? What is success? Success is finding your purpose and fulfilling it. Amen? If success was measured, it is, is, is measured by how well you live, what about Michael Jackson? In my opinion, he died unsuccessful. He died very sad and pitiful. Because when we found out when he died, he was living on knockouts, using those things that were used for operation to knock out himself, which happy person who want to knock themselves out every day. He wasn't successful. He lived a life of fame. But it wasn't success. He was living a life that the devil chose for him. And you see, the end is destruction. And that's what the devil wants you to do. It is not the will for God for you to force your child to do what you want. As a child of God, a woman of God, a man of God, the will of God is for you to acknowledge the Lord your God in all your ways. Do not lean on to your own understanding. Even when it comes to 
our joy. We need to seek the Lord. And our place in our children's life is to guide them along the path that God has chosen for them. Then they can find true success. Because you want to become the, the world singer and you cannot sing, now you want your daughter to take singing lessons. She was doing and be nice and great, but she'll be frustrated. So let's set the captive free. And I'm guilty as well. Amen? So we need to change the way we think. The devil wants to be destroyed. But the master has sent you here today because there are some things in your life that are still tying you down. Mentality. The way you think. Some of you are living in isolation. Because you are tied up, tied down. You cannot trust nobody. You cannot open your heart because of what people did to you. So the things that people did to you, those wounds, they have become bondage in your life. And you need to be set free. Because you cannot become who you want to become by being in isolation. God needs to have people in your life. God wants to connect you with people that you can trust and together you can do something good. Amen? God wants to give you relationship. But you need to break out of your cocoon. You need to break out of your calabash. You need to break out from that thing that is holding you down. Because God has divine connections for you that will take you to another level. Amen? God wants to set you free. Don't allow the things of your past that people do to you to control your life today. That's what the Bible, when we're reading, the Bible says, take the chains off your neck. We read in Isaiah 52. He said, take the chains off your neck. You need to break out of it. Amen? Because God has a plan and a purpose for your life. And it's your time to arise and shine. God wants to arise from your ashes. God wants to shake that thing, my God. God wants to arise and shine and become. God wants to put you in a place of honor. But he can never put you there with you living in isolation. Be fearful. You don't dare to do anything. God said, break off. Because whenever and the devil puts a chain on someone, if you check it out, it's always someone carrying a lot of things. The dog, he had the ability to drive in a king. You see his connection. That's his level. He was an ego. He was not chicken. He had the ability to walk with the, the big guys. But you see, he was bound up, being neglected, rejected. And you see the man with the, with the, with the demons, 60,000. You see, he had the ability to be a world evangelist, but he was tied up. So whenever you find yourself tied up and bound, you have a child in your house, the child always goes to trouble, always sick, always start. Pay attention. That's a treasure child. It's carrying something. You need to untie that child. Amen? So it must be, can I have the music, please? Hallelujah, if you can have it on track one. One minute. Hallelujah. God brought me here today because there are some things you need to hear. There are some things that God wants to break out of your life. I told you I did not come here to promote donkeys. That's not my assignment. Because God has a plan of your a purpose in your life. And you have been living in isolation. You have been living beneath your capacity. You have been rejected for too long. God has said to come into this meeting. I want you to pay attention. In the book of Luke that we just came from, the book of Luke that we just read from, chapter 35, I mean verse 35, if you meditate on it, if you meditate on it, you will find out this. Hallelujah. I want to speak prophetically to somebody, so please give me your attention and listen to the Spirit. Amen. If you look at Luke 19:35. You will find out that the donkey finally found its purpose. It was being written by our Lord Jesus Christ. It's like God paid the donkey for all the years that he was bound up without any purpose. God rewarded him for all the shame and pain that he's been through. Remember the Bible says, I will restore to you, I'm speaking prophetically now, I will restore unto you all Yes, that were eaten up by the canker one, the palmer one, the locust, and the caterpillar. God said, I will restore to you 